All right, so um, you guys are actually the easy parent meeting. Uh, not too much groundbreaking stuff here. I'm gonna run you guys through a presentation just like we normally do. Uh, a little weird, obviously, doing it this way and not in person, uh, which you know I actually enjoy getting everyone together for the first time and going through this stuff. But since it's still a little bit weird, um, we, I figured just better to do it this way and keep it safe. Um, if you guys have questions at any point in time as we're going through this, um, I would say easiest way is probably to throw it in the chat thing for right now. And then at the end, if everyone wants to turn their sound on or whatever, um, we can chat and get to the bottom of some stuff because I do want to talk about out of town trip and stuff like that. Um, so why don't I just hit the PowerPoint right now? I shortened it from last year just so we can kind of cruise through it. Um, pretty much only a couple new families, which I will get to the roster page and say hello to those people. So give me one second and I will get us going here. All right, so I'm just gonna do it this way. I'm not gonna go through the whole play thing. So you guys can see this. Um, so we will go first to players for this year. Uh, I've pretty much talked to, I wanna say almost everybody at this point. We got 11 people right now. Uh, we are welcoming Brody Bessenhofer, Kaylee Steele, and AJ Polizzi to the group that we had for the Royal team last year. Uh, Brody coming up from the 8U group, uh, AJ coming over from the Silver group, and then Kaylee coming to us uh, from the Stoppers program. Uh, I put there at the bottom, you guys can see it, a little question mark. Um, with 11 right now, we're fine. Um, I love the group that we have in place. Obviously, it says there Angel will continue to be the head coach. I think everybody would be pretty happy about that. Um, but I did put on there that we can offer a spot if we find the right fit. Uh, with 11, we are literally at the edge of the budget. We really have no room to go over and do anything else. That really sets us up to be tight. The teams are really meant to have 12. Um, I won't force that issue. I've actually had a couple people try out and I've turned them down. Um, just because, as I've said to many of you guys, I want to make sure if we do fill a 12th person, it's the right fit and it helps the team. I'm not looking to just fill a, a, a spot with a body. Um, if that were the case, we could have had a couple of the other players from the Silver Group last year come on board. Um, so if any of you do think you know somebody that's looking for a home and would fit in well with this group, I'm happy to take a look. Um, but not necessarily in a hurry to fill it because, like I continue to say, it's got to be the right fit um, for the sake of the boys. So uh, keep that in mind. But if it doesn't happen, not a big deal, not the end of the world. But I figured I would at least put that out there. Um, while we're all together. Um, expectations really haven't changed from last year. Um, again, as we always say, play multiple sports. That's what we want. I know most of your kids do. I totally encourage it. In the off season, play as many sports. If you have to miss, just let us know. Um, I'll kind of hit on that a little bit a couple slides later for something that will change. Um, and then in season, wasn't an issue with this group, hasn't been the last couple years. Uh, we just expect that when it's baseball season, boys are at baseball. I think that goes without being said. Um, and then I will get to you guys, the parent code of conduct. Usually this is the day when we fill that out and you guys hand it in. I'll get it to you guys. Um, we do the player code of conduct with the boys once we get in for practice so that we can go over that with them. Um, not that it, uh, luckily it has, none of it has really had to be enforced in the last couple of years, but it's just a good way to set expectations to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Um, for parents that weren't at the meeting last year or new to the program, I put at the bottom of this one, um, this is a program and therefore bigger than any one team alone. Nothing is done without management, the management team's awareness. Uh, I know that sounds a little goofy. And the reason that I had to put that in there is because a couple years ago, and I kind of make a joke out of it, but it wasn't all that cool. Um, they went on an out of town trip and they decided, took it upon themselves to make a team jersey for this out of town trip, which on the surface doesn't seem like a big deal at all. The only issue was 
Um, they didn't do it through us, even though we could have gotten them a better price on the same jersey. Um, they didn't use our actual logo, nor did they use our team colors. So it was a really bad look when I had to see through um, somebody's Facebook page, the boys on the field wearing a completely random jersey that we had no idea about. Not even the coach knew that the boys were going to be doing it. So, you know, that's my weird example. But just keep in mind that if you guys want to do anything like that as a group, I'm totally on board. Just let's use the resources we have and do it right. So it looks the part, um, especially now with the Marucci stuff. We have access to so much stuff that we've never had in the past. And uh, I think that that's something that, you know, if we wanted to do it, I'm open. I'm open minded. You guys know me. Let's just make sure that we handle it the right way. Um, off season program stays the same of what it was supposed to be for last year. Uh, still 32 practices uh, starting in November like we did last year. Um, we'll do the 20 team practices like we always have. We'll do 12 position specific workouts starting in January. Uh, th this year we are going to break that up. I did have parents both from the younger families and from the older families um, ask for that for different reasons. Um, honestly, I liked having them together. Um, the problem was that the when it came to maturity, it was actually the older boys that were the problem. And so I don't necessarily want the younger guys involved with having to deal with the older guys um, who I thought were going to be a good example. And in some cases were not. Um, so we will have the 10s and 12s doing their position stuff together and the 13s and 14s doing their position stuff together. Uh, so we will break those up onto different days this year. Um, but the whole goal behind it is the same thing. The boys are getting their work in smaller groups. Uh, specific to the positions that they play. So that stays the same. Still have three coaches at the practices, at the regular team practices. Um, I stress it every year. This group is one of the least groups that I have to stress it to, but I'm still going to say it. Abuse the membership. Please use it. We have the new facility over on Central, the old ballpark spot. So now we have even more cages. There's really no excuse not to bring the boys in and when I get to another slide, you're not going to have a choice. Sorry to say it, um, but part of our new accountability stuff is going to be uh, mandatory cage time. So I'll hit on that in a little bit here. Um, again, all workouts are going to be at the facility I'm at right now, the central or the business center drive location where we've always been. That's where all team workouts are going to be going forward and all individual lessons or membership cage rentals, whatever, will be over at the other facility. That's kind of how we're laying things out going forward. Uh, as far as COVID stuff goes, um, we are going to have the boys initially, at least until we're told otherwise, wearing masks at practice. Um, we're allowed right now to have 50 people in the building. Uh, so unfortunately, that means between having the teams at practice, the coaches at practice, uh, we probably won't be having parents in initially. Hopefully that lessens up a little bit as we get going on here. Uh, but just to play it safe, we're going to start out with the boys in the facility. We'll keep them spaced out just like we did in June. Um, with masks on and then hopefully as you know things start to lessen up a little bit we'll be able to get away from that but we're going to play it safe for the time being um let's continue on kind of just hitting on more play ball stuff obviously you guys are, with only having one new family to the program in this group you guys all know that everything's at play ball all the coaches are our coaches all the guys working with the kids are professional instructors um just to reiterate if you do choose to do extra stuff um, our guys get 20% off as part of their membership to the facility. They also get the whole, you know, 30 minutes a day of cage time, days when we're not busy, 30 minutes can easily turn into three hours. That's fine with me. You guys can, you know, we want, especially with the, with having more space now, we want the boys here. We want a place where they can just come hang out and live baseball. That's why we did it. Um, it's, a, you know, adding that new spot over there on Central is huge for our guys. You know, obviously we did it for the business side, but truthfully with the Dodgers in mind, I want a place where the boys can just go hang out. If they truly are baseball guys, which a lot of the guys in this group are, if they want, you know, once they're old enough to go ride their bikes over there and you guys are comfortable with that, we want to be a place where they can hang out and, and basically do anything baseball that they want to do. So that's, you know, we had definitely had that in mind when we decided to go in there. Um, the access to additional services, I actually don't know why I didn't put it, but obviously Marucci being a big part of that now, take advantage of that membership. Um, that's for you guys. You know, we as a program could opt to take a higher percentage um, when it comes to the discounts that we give you guys, but we don't. Like, I honestly just pass the entire discount off to the families. You know, that's kind of our way to, you know, one of the value adds that I found that, hey, listen, we know we're a more expensive program. We know this is an investment. Um, but at the end of the day, it, you guys are going to buy bats. You're going to buy gloves. 
Marucci's giving us an incredible opportunity. We want to pass that on to you guys so that you guys, you know, that's another way that, you know, if you've got to buy a new bat, at least you're getting it for a discount. That helps you guys. The stuff on the Marucci side helps us on the back end. So it's a win-win for everybody. So please utilize that. It's a no-brainer. I mean, if it'd be one thing if we were making a ton of money off of it, but it's not a sales pitch. It's literally just for you guys. Um, obviously, lessons in group training. I'm, you know me, I'm not a pushy salesman. If you want it, we are here to help. Again, that's an investment. Um, that's where I'm leaving that. Um, blast baseball, I highlighted that. Um, that's something new that we're gonna introduce this year. I'm not making it mandatory um, because it was not built in the budget. Going forward, it probably will be mandatory. And I'll talk about that on the accountability side. Um, but do some research. I'm going to send you guys an email. Um, I got off the phone with the Blast guys yesterday. Uh, the Indians used it last year uh, for all their players, and it worked awesome. Uh, basically, what that is, is is us being able to remotely track what the boys are doing hitting. It's a bat sensor, um, but it comes with a bunch of back-end features, too. Um, part of what we're going to do for this year, at least, is if you guys buy the sensor, we're going to pay for the back-end um, that you guys will get, which you get, uh, uh, from what I understand, you get an online profile, but then us us footing the bill for that allows us to track what the boys are doing remotely. So we can actually track all of their swings, um, which I'll send you guys an email and hit on that again, not making it mandatory, but definitely a useful tool, maybe something thinking Christmas gift or something like that, that would be good for the boys. Um, but I'll send a separate email about that because I just got all the details about that last night. And then obviously hit tracks and everything that we always use with the training. Um, location of all of our winter training, as I said before, is this location, the business center drive one, the same one we were at last year. This is where we'll be at for all the practices. Um, what we preach, not a whole lot different here, except I did add number five. Um, to me, the biggest ones here are number one and number five, work hard, period. Like that's the biggest thing that I want to stress with these guys, especially at this age. You know, we're going to keep it fun. You guys know us well enough. Um, but, you know, when Mike Puglies, who runs the Indian program, came to me this year, and he said, you know what, regardless of talent, and we've given them a lot of really good players, but he said, regardless of talent, they don't have to worry about our guys when they jump into a high school practice. You know, he said they can pick, they can almost walk down the line and pick out which guys are Dodgers guys based on how they go about their business and how hard they work. And that, to me, is one of the biggest um compliments that I've been given as a coach, because that just means that all the hard work that we've done to get them to understand what it takes pays off. And if those coaches recognize that, then we're doing our job. You know, there's, we're going to win games. We're going to lose games. Uh, you know, to me, you know, that doesn't matter at this age, but if the boys do learn how to put in the work and get ready for high school baseball, to me, we've done our job. Uh, so piggybacking off that, uh, part of what we're going to change about this year, a little bit up and down the line, maybe to this age to a little bit lesser degree. Um, we're going to make sure that, you know, things are earned even more so than we've talked about in the past. And at 10 U, I'm not saying that we're going to have guys sit in five innings. That is absolutely not the case. Um, but I put on there because I think things are changing in the world of travel baseball. I think we're all seeing that. And I think this, you know, COVID season opened my eyes to a lot of different things and I'm not changing my philosophy. We're still developmental first. That's never going to change. Um, but what I really want these boys to understand is that they've got to go out and earn what they want. You know, they're not just going to get a free pass. Um, we want them to, to first earn what they've got and then keep working hard to hold on to that. And I think that's really important. Um, you know, not so much with this age, but we definitely had some challenges with a couple of the older groups. Um, nothing crazy, but, you know, I'll use an example from our 11 U group. Um, they scuffled a little bit. They were in some rough tournaments and, you know, probably similar to what, to what our um, silver team experienced a little bit uh, this year at the nine U side, but to, to a little bit bigger degree with the 11s. And, you know, I had a parent come to me and say, well, you know, I really like my son to play shortstop. And we said, okay, fair. He needs to do X, Y, and Z or show us X, Y, and Z and we'll give him a shot. And he came back about two weeks later and he said, well, why hasn't he gotten a shot yet? You know, the other two guys that are playing shortstop are struggling. Why isn't he getting an opportunity? I said, well, you still haven't shown us, you know, the, the, the things that we laid out that he should be working towards. You know, you don't get necessarily an opportunity because other people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. You still have to take care of your side of it. And so and, and he didn't seem to understand that. And so what I want to get the boys to understand is not a lot. You know, you still have to do work hard at your end of it to get an opportunity just because somebody else might be struggling. Um, that's not the reason you get to go take an opportunity at a certain spot. 
you know, those guys are there because they've shown us they have, you know, and it could be any position. It could be center field, catcher, whatever that might be. But they've shown us something that's given them an opportunity to play a certain position. And if you accomplish X, Y, and Z, you absolutely do. You know, I'll, I'll hit on it again at the end. We want to give the boys opportunities. That's never going to change. We want to be able to say he gets a chance because he's worked his butt off and he gets to try it. But we're not just going to give it to them. And maybe we will get a little bit lax on that, especially at 10U where there is a lot more moving around to be done and there's a lot less specificity of to what the boys play. But I think at least at this age, planting the seed of that is important. And, and you know, with the way things are changing and the way, to be honest, you know, parents are changing, um, I think we need to also kind of keep up with the times and make sure that we're doing what's best for the boys. And I think that's a big part of it. Um, moving on to the accountability side that I talked about. Um, we are going to make cage time mandatory this year. Uh, something that parents have actually brought up to me and we've talked about in the past. I'm not going to go crazy with it. So starting in November, once we start practices, all the boys are going to be, um, it's going to be mandatory for the boys to spend 30 minutes in a cage a week. That's all I'm looking for. Come in one time, do one cage rental. I don't think that's too much to ask. If they want to do more, by all means, that is totally okay with me, but we will have a binder up at the front desk that's going to have just basically a spreadsheet of everyone's name and then every week laid out and every week you'll come in, stop at the front desk with Heidi, check off your spot for that week. And then I can go through every week and make sure that everybody did their cage time. Pretty simple. And hopefully everybody will, will get on board with that. Um, if you don't attend one week for one reason or another, I get it. I know life is crazy, especially with the COVID stuff and whatever it'll roll into the next week. So the next week, you'll just have to do two 30 minute sessions. If it gets to be an issue, uh, Rob, I saw your question pop up. Um, we are actually working on an online platform where you guys can just go and do cage rentals online. Uh, I'm doing a whole new website right now. Um, so that's part of what I've been spending my time on is we're getting a whole new website for Playball launched. And that is gonna be part of it. So you guys will be able to just go on the online platform click, do your cage time right from there. So uh, I didn't want to put that in here because it's not done yet, but that's definitely in the works. Um, so I did put in here though, if you, if you continually, and maybe it's two weeks, maybe, you know, if we, if you talk to us and we know something's up, you know, I'm not looking to go crazy on this. I just want to set something out there that we're going to make sure that people are accountable for putting in time. So if you can't make it one week and you do an hour the next week, cool. If it starts to be an issue, we are gonna suspend someone from team activities. If you can't keep up with doing what your part is for the team, then we're gonna make sure that there's something because we have to be able to hold people accountable in some way. Um, if you miss team practice, that will also be another 30 minutes in the cage that week just to make up for some of the hitting time that was lost by not being at practice. Again, I don't think that's too much to ask. I think that's pretty reasonable. And if you guys are paying for this anyway, I think that's something that people should understand is, is pretty acceptable. Um, just to hit on the blast thing one more time really quick. One of the reasons I really like it is because it tells us how many swings the boys are taking on their own time, it shows us the metrics for those swings. So I, you know, it happens a lot. People tell me, well, we were at the cages X number of times this week. I have the schedule and I'm at the facility most days. I know I'm not here every night anymore, but I'm here a lot. Chris is there every day you can't really pull a fast one over on us. We know who's here or not. So when someone tells me that they're here X number of times every week, and I know that's just not true, it, you know, it, it, this is a way for us to be able to say, okay, your boys are going to get something out of it because they're going to get all the information that they need as they're hitting. In addition to, um, it gives video feedback. There's drills in there. It, you guys will see all the information on it, but from a coaching side, it gives us a lot of information. And for me, I'll then know who really is, uh, yeah, Corey, lessons count. As long as you guys are spending time there, that's really the whole goal here. You know, if it means time doing throwing a bullpen, taking ground balls in a cage, whatever that might be, as long as we know the boys are putting in time, that's honestly just what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and then I put here on the bottom, again, not so much with this group. You guys have a pretty good group of parents, but I did put this, that it's your responsibility as a parent to make sure that your son is not put into a position of being underprepared to help his teammates. It, it sounds like it shouldn't have to be said, but we have some parents that honestly just don't commit in the way that they should. 
And, and it's hard to blame the player for that because I know it's on the parent's side, but then ultimately it's the player who pays the price. And so I just want to make sure that parents understand that, you know, if you're committed to a travel baseball program and, and ours is, it's an investment. It's one of the more expensive ones. You should be open to taking, taking all the opportunities that we give you and putting the boys in a position to be successful. You know, it's for, I'll admit my frustration is when a parent who doesn't take advantage of, of the things that we offer, the cage time, doesn't show up to practices, constantly has a reason to miss games, and then comes to me and complains about, well, my son doesn't get this or the program doesn't deliver on this, it's really hard for me to take that criticism. You know, I, you guys know me. I've had conversations with a lot of you personally. I love feedback. I'm open to feedback. I want to fix problems. But when it's somebody who doesn't take advantage of all the opportunities offered and they have a reason to complain, it's hard for me to, to listen to that. And so I just want to make sure that you know, we set the expectation with parents that, yes, we have accountability for the players, but there's also a level of accountability for the parents. And I don't think we've ever really addressed that before. And I think it's time that we need to. So hopefully it's not the case, but had to make sure I put it in there anyway. Um, In-season program. We'll move on past that stuff. Uh, professional coach, Angel, easy for you guys. That's already set. Talk to him. He's ready to go. He's excited. Um, we'll have roving assistants, college guys, just like we have in the past. Um, I think this year we did a fairly good job at keeping that consistent of who was going to be there for the most part. I know you guys had a little bit of bouncing around, but at least it's the same group of two or three guys for the whole summer. So you know, we're going to try to do that again this year. Um, you guys will play in the MSBL A level. Uh, we may transition to a new league that's forming. Um, and this is with a bunch of academy guys that I know um, that are putting this together. Uh, so I think it's actually a good fit for what we want to do. I've been talking about leaving the MSBL for years. Um, so that conversation started a couple weeks ago. Uh, if we do have the opportunity to move into that league and it does move forward, then we're going to do that. Um, it's a lot of the same teams that we're used to playing. It's just not going to be uh, the restrictions of the MSBL. So I'm actually pretty excited about that. Um, three tournaments plan right now would be to do one, probably Memorial Day weekend, and then the other two after the MSBL tournament. Uh, and then home field is heritage. That doesn't change. I am working on some more fields for this year. I think we're going to have access to some more. Um, but for the moment, heritage, um, do some practices at Oakton again, because they're talking to them about getting back in there. And I, I kind of laid into them a little bit. So we'll get that all straightened out, uh, do some stuff at heritage. And then there's actually a little field back here um, in the business park um, by the new ice rink that does, um, they rent out their baseball field. Uh, they got a little turf field there. So we're looking to get some practice time back there. So definitely some more options than in the past. I know people want to do consistent in-season practices, so I'm working on making that happen. Uh, playing time philosophy. You see my marked up slide here that I adjusted from last year. Um, I Knowing this group, I don't think we're going to have many issues here. I don't think we have any reason to have many issues here. Um, but when we're talking about accountability, and accountability is going to be my message to the boys and to the families all year long, we have to stick to that. There's no such thing as accountability without consistency. So, you know, we're always about development first and foremost. That's never going to change. That is my true, you know, you guys know me. That's that's my bread and butter. That's where my passion's at. We want to get these boys ready for high school baseball. That's not changing. Um, but I crossed it out. I left it in there and I crossed it out. Defensive playing time will not be mapped out equally. There's a caveat. It will be mapped out equally as long as everyone does their part. That simple. We're talking about accountability. If everyone puts in the work, everyone's doing their weekly cage time, all the things that they're supposed to do, then playing time is going to be fair. It's that simple. Okay? But in the cases where somebody's not or they're not prepared or whatever it is, I just want to let everybody know now that not we're not going to take the, the scope of play to win at all costs, but we are going to make sure people understand what's expected of them and we're going to hold them to that. Um, it can't be perfectly fair. I think even when we try to be fair, we know it can't be perfectly fair. Um, you know, having players move around, some players are going to move around more than others will. The guys that have the capability to do so will. The guys that need to work in certain spots before they're given that, that, that opportunity, they're going to have to work at it. But again, I put it in there in red. I highlighted it. I can't say it more clearly. We want to have a reason to give every player a chance to do whatever they want to do. But you, you guys as parents and them as players have to do their part. It's not just here's a free handout and here's a chance to play the position that you walked up to the coach and asked to play. Okay, we all know. Put in the time, do the things that we need to see out of that player to get a chance at that position. And 
nothing makes me happier as a coach than to see a kid earn a spot and run with it. You know, that's as a player, that's what we wanted. You know, you, you growing up, I want to be the center fielder. Okay, well, here's what you got to do to beat out that. I mean, not only does that help that player, that helps that team. That's what good teams are. Internal competition helps teams get better. It's what it's all about. And I think that with the way kids are now, maybe more so than they were five years ago, that's starting to go away a little bit. So I'm trying to find creative ways to bring that back into what we do and into the culture that we have. So I don't think we're doing anything drastically different than we have. I think we're just laying it out there in a way that we're more clear. And, you know, if someone for the first time, if someone's not doing their part, they're going to be punished for it. I think it's that simple. And as long as everyone does their part, then there's nothing that really needs to be said. And I don't know that we'll even see any difference from the way things were in the past, but I think it gives us a little bit more competitive brand of baseball that way. It's better for the boys on the developmental side. And overall, I think everyone's going to be more happy if everyone does their part. So it's really that simple. You know, I marked it up and changed things and bolded stuff. But at the end of the day, if everyone does their thing, we're all good. So I'll let you guys ask questions about that once we get to the end here. Um, and then what's next? Um, for everyone that was with us last year, you know, I had a brand new shiny website finished right before COVID. So, you know, once things kind of went haywire, me learning how to use the website and keep everything updated on that totally went to the back burner. But this year, I really want to make an effort because it is a good system to make sure that all the information that you guys need is going to be available on that website. Um, so that'll be your go-to for information, scheduling, everything we need. I, I want that to be the go-to hub for info. So I'm going to do my best to keep that updated. If I don't, feel free to shoot me an email, kick me in the ass, say, Matt, get the website updated. Because I honestly, I really want to put an effort into it. It's a good tool. It has everything we need. So I'm going to do my part there. Um, one thing we'll open it up in a second here is the out-of-town trip. If we have an out-of-town trip for the first time, I'm going to I'm going to ask that question first, if everyone's comfortable. And then depending on what we know about that, we'll decide how elaborate or how not elaborate we want to be. Um, uniform try on day. The guys from Marucci are coming back with all the sizing stuff. Um, they will be here the weekend of MLK. So it's uh, January 16th is that Sunday. So they will be here. We will do it during team practices. Um, those guys will be out here. And then I know we had a hiccup with the uh, bundle for ordering the practice stuff. I will make sure that is all ironed out by the time we do the uniform order. And then they said, as long as we get our orders in that week for uniforms, we'll be good to go by the time we go outside. So don't have to worry about uniforms until we get into January. Um, but that is that. So I'm going to get back to me. Um, if you guys want to unmute feel free um i think we should talk about the out of town trip at least just throw out ideas for right now or if anyone has any hesitation I'll, honestly feel free to voice it if you don't want to voice it right now uh shoot me an email and we can do it that way um but once we get a couple ideas in place we'll do what we've done in the past i'll send an email i'll shoot the details out for each option then we'll vote as a group um but that's based on the fact that we decide that we want to do it. So I guess my first question is for the people that are here, do you want to or not want to travel this year? I'm getting a thumbs up yeah. from Bob. Sure. Rob's in. Yeah. Anybody yeah. with any real hesitancy and feel free to say it. If, if you got concerned, say it. All right. Nope. So, sounds like we're, we're good. We're going to go somewhere now. Do you guys are you guys thinking somewhere traveling somewhere fairly local weekend week long those are the kind of things that we can do i you know if people don't know of many options i could put together a list and let you guys see them um i'm i'm just spitballing you know at this age um there's a couple that aren't too, like wisconsin dells like we were going to do last year is obviously an option i think that's a good one for 10u since we didn't do it last year a weekend up there is not a bad thing. The competition is usually decent. It's Game Day USA, who we do a lot of our events through anyway. So that's one. Um, where we were going to send our 11s and 13s, I think, last year in Kentucky. It's not too far. Game Day actually is running an event now at the same venue. Um, that's an option that we could do. Um, I think that's a... 
I want to say that's a Wednesday to Sunday. So it's a little bit longer. It's not crazy price. They put on a good event. The fields are good. So if you guys want to go a little bit bigger into it, that's something like that's an option. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it's up to you guys. And I've always said the out of town trip is what the parents want to do. You guys are the ones footing the bill on that. Um, you know, we could go crazy and go to Myrtle Beach. I, you know, at 10 U personal opinion, I don't think that's necessary. Um, yeah, I mean, Corey's giving a thumbs down. I'm giving a thumbs down. I mean, but there's teams that do it. So, you know, you guys are going to get, you know, we send our older guys to Myrtle Beach, you know, something new we've got worked out with Marucci. Our 14s are going to go down and play in Baton Rouge every year. That's going to be our new trip for 14 U. Um, they host the Marucci World Series. This will be, this was supposed to be our first year going down there for that, but they banged it. So, Looking forward to doing that with our 14s uh, this summer. You know, obviously Cooperstown coming up in a couple of years. So, you know, the big ones are out there. I think at this age, it should still be about going somewhere as a group, hanging out in the hotel, letting the boys hang out in the pool, playing some baseball. And that's, that's what, to me, a 10U trip is. So um, if you guys want, I can just put together a list of three or four options. Um, we can do a anonymous vote and see what we get back and then kind of just go from there. Does that sound good? Cool. Questions? Anybody? I know I kind of went through pretty quick here. Um, anything? Any suggestions? Any questions? Comments? Fire them at me. Hey, Matt. Yep. If, uh, like, if you get the fields and everything for in season, like, ideally, what would you want to do from a practice standpoint, like, once we start the season? I think re it's realistic to say once a week is, is probably what we would try to do. Um, if the schedule allows for that, be straight up with the budget we have, there's no way we could afford to do twice a week without asking you guys for more money. And fields are expensive. We don't get fields for free. You know, town teams like the Mavericks or Park Ridge or whatever, they don't pay for their fields. That's a, that's simply one of our hurdles that we'll always have. Um, I've tried to do partnerships with those programs to use their fields to trade off space in the facility for space on the fields and unfortunately park districts won't let us in to do something like that um if you guys were open to it i have no problem saying if all the parents agree and you guys want to spend more to have a second practice every week um that that's totally up to you guys and that just means we'd have to cover tr quite honestly paying a angel a little bit more because and i think that's the, the other side of it that parents don't often think about is that these guys have full-time jobs. And while we call them a professional coach, which they are, they still have other jobs. Angel has a kid. He has a family. So if he's coaching three or four games a week, plus a practice a week, plus a second practice a week on top of his full-time job, now he's working, you know, 40 hours a week at his job, plus six days a week coaching travel baseball. We pay them decently, but we have to be pretty, you know, it's, it's, I think it's fair to be respectful of their time too. So that plays into it. Um, you know, I don't know if that's fair for me to say to you guys, but it's, it's just the truth of it. Um, you know, it'd be one thing if we had volunteer coaches, but we don't, I mean, these guys already do a lot for what they're paid and to ask them to be out there six, seven days a week is asking a lot for somebody that, you know, doesn't do it full time. It's one thing for, you know, we're lucky enough to have Chris or Nada or Sal. Now those guys are full time with me. Angel's not. And so that's just something I think in fairness to him, we got to keep in mind, but if that's what you guys want to do and we want to say, okay, adding a second practice on top of an original practice every week costs X is everybody in. Honestly, I don't think it'd be anything too expensive. You're talking field rental and I, I don't know what we would kick angel probably wouldn't have to be much, but if we said everyone pops in another hundred bucks or 150 bucks to do extra practice once a week, um, I don't even know if it would be that much to be completely honest. Just depends how many weeks we do it. Um, but that's something that if you guys as a group want to do it, fine with me. I mean, it's, I'm never going to hold people back from wanting more practice. It's just, we have to, we have to play it with the budget too. Is that fair? That's it. No more questions. There's no way it's that easy. All right. Well, since someone's going to have a question, email me later, I guess. Hey Matt. Yep. Uh, so this new league that might they might go into is uh, do you know? I mean, will it will it be like MSBL as far as games during the week and stuff like that? And what is it? You know, still local. Or so whatever? yeah, it's, it's so basically, Corey, what it is. So 
we do a lot of work with Chicago Scouts Association on the high school side. And basically what that is, it's a group of academies and, and, you know, programs like ours where we run our own thing. We don't, we're not affiliated with a park district or anything like that. It's guys like us that run programs. Um, we, at the high school and Scouts Association sends basically the best of the best to the big events every year. So we send, you know, two or three kids with a group of guys from all the other programs. And it's, it's good guys that are in it for the right reasons that we all get along. So it's, it's kind of like we, you know, it's a conference of good baseball people. And so we're kind of taking what we do on the high school side and turning it into a league on the youth side. So it's basically the MSBL without the headaches of the people we don't want to deal with. Kind of a fair way to say it. Um, you know, it, it same amount of games, still a tournament at the end. Um, I think they're even throwing in like a chance to go to the Chicago dogs game or something like that. So, you know, it's the same thing. It's just with a select group of people that we want to be involved with versus driving to what what, what you guys were going to play like Oz park in, in the city. Like we're not doing that. Basically we're simplifying the MSBL. Now I've said for years, if I have to be the guy to do this, I'll be the guy to do this. And this year, a couple other guys jumped on board and said they would take control of it. So I was like in like, no hesitation. I'm in. Tell me what we're going to do. It's not more commuting. It's not anything more on you guys. It's just less headaches and playing with the groups that, you know, we're not, we're not going to run into the crazy teams that we don't want to deal with. And I think that's, it's more about that than it is about anything else. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. And, you know, hopefully we don't have crazy, you know, we all know. And we all know. Let's just leave it at that. Just better, ba- better baseball with baseball people, I guess. Anything else? That's all I got for you guys. So I guess next step is I will shoot you guys an email with the blast stuff. I'll shoot you guys an email with the out of town trip stuff. I think that's all you got for me. I will, in that email, I'll include with you guys the um, practice times. Um, you guys will probably be the first practice slot, which will be 1130 on Sundays. Um, but I'll confirm that with you guys. So plan for that for right now. So you guys will be 1130 to one on Sundays. Um, and we're getting close to that. So, you know, we're only a couple of weeks away. So I'm excited. I know the guys are excited to jump right back into it. Hopefully the boys are enjoying some time off. I'm sure some of them aren't and probably still doing baseball and I can't say I'm upset about that. So all good stuff. And I guess that's it. If everyone's good, then thank you you guys go. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks, Matt.